This is the first in a series of videos in which I will explain and kind of give some instruction into my philosophies and principles for looping. I've been getting a lot of questions lately as far as what are some really good looping pedals to use for beginners and what my own pedal board setup looks like if I'm going into a solo looping gig or if I'm just practicing at home. So in a few moments I'll give you a kind of a sneak peek into what my setup looks like and how I use all of my pedals. Hope you enjoy it. So this is my looping setup or rig if you will. As you can see it's really quite simple as it only consists of three pedals. Um, however with these three pedals I'm pretty much able to do whatever I need to do in terms of a live looping performance. So uh, let's kind of start at the beginning and run through that way. Um, over here is the microphone that I like to use the most. This is an AKG D5. A really good microphone uh, that's often used for beatboxing. Um, in fact, it was the official beatbox battle microphone for uh, the beatboxing competitions in Europe. It uh, lends itself very well to harmonic playing as well due to its uh, wide frequency response. I'm able to get a very natural sound uh, for beatboxing, harmonica, and voice with that microphone. Alright, so moving on here. Uh, my cord loops into my first pedal via an impedance transformer, which is this little thing right here. Um, the reason why I use an impedance transformer is because I like to hook my pedal board and microphone directly into an amplifier. And uh, most vocal microphones are what's called low impedance and in order to go into a amplification setup you need what's called high impedance. So basically if I try to plug my microphone directly into an amplifier the volume would be extremely low. So the transformer switches the microphone signal through the pedal into a high impedance output which makes everything properly loud. But anyway um, this is the first pedal in my pedal board setup, and I'll get into why it's actually set up this way in a minute. But um, this is my Boss DD3 Digital Delay, which uh, for you harmonica enthusiasts is the same pedal that Adam Gusso has been using for uh, many years now. It's a uh, very accurately controllable digital delay pedal. Um, it's not particularly fancy, but I really like the uh, delays and modes I'm able to get out of it. And it's pretty easy to use. Um, if you're trying to get a sense of what my settings are, those are just kind of wonky right now. But um, it works for what I need it to work for. I like to use delay to get kind of a wider sound for both harmonica and for my voice. Um, out of the digital delay, I'm going into a Boss OC3 Super Octave pedal. And basically what this pedal does is lower um, whatever the input is down one to two octaves. So if you ever hear me doing these really bassy sounds with my voice or with harmonica, this is the pedal that I'm using to achieve those things. Um, I used to use the OC2 which is uh, the older variant of this. It's discontinued now actually. Uh, the OC3 is a little bit more controllable, a little bit cleaner, and uh, it has a polyphonic setting which kind of allows you to play several notes at once and still drop those notes down an octave without it sounding really weird. So it's a really good pedal um, and really easy to control. And finally into my looping station um, which is the Boss RC30 dual track looper. The reason why I use a dual track looper now um, and well let's actually get into what a dual track or single track looper is. I used to use a pedal called the Akai Headrush E2 which is a single uh, track looper which is often used by Son of Dave. Um, and the difference is you can only record one track, um, which is like saying you can only record via one input. With a dual track looper, I am able to record something to track number one, then record something into track number two, and switch between the two. 
So it allows me to have a lot of flexibility as far as how I'm looping. Um, pretty much any of Boss's looping pedals, uh, the RC20, uh, uh, the RC20XL, the RC30, even the RC2, I believe, the little one switch pedal that looks a lot like that, are all very good options. Uh, the Akai Head Rush is also a very good looping pedal, um, and uh, as well as the Digitech Jam Man loopers. Basically, any of these pedals and all of these pedals do the same thing, uh, just in slightly different ways. So, if you're looking for a new looping pedal, um, any of the ones I just mentioned would work certainly but uh, I really like this one because as you become more advanced in looping it becomes very helpful to record into multiple tracks and this particular pedal allows you to do that alright and out of that and this is for my practice setup actually um, my cord running out of that goes into my little acoustic practice amplifier here and uh, this is something a little bit different because most harmonica players do not use acoustic amplifiers. Um, they generally do not lend themselves very well for harmonica and they do not allow you to give an overdriven sound uh, as most harmonica players really like. So why would I use an acoustic amplifier? Well, as a beatboxer and looping uh, artist, um, I'm actually not looking for distortion. I'm looking for a cleaner sound. And um, even though I do play and use harmonica in my setup, I like to have the control over what my voice is doing and what the harmonica is doing. And with an acoustic amplifier, I'm able to get as much precision out of the beats from my beatboxing without losing any of uh, the clarity with most guitar amplifiers I would be losing a great deal of clarity by uh, um, beatboxing into them. With this, uh, no matter what I'm doing, it's still able to uh, come out very clearly and uh, I can use my natural tone on the harmonica to kind of shape what I'm doing. Uh, in a stage situation, I may be using a more distorted amp like a Bassman or um, like a Fender Princeton amplifier to achieve that grittier tone, but for practice purposes in looping, I prefer this. And another big reason why I really like this amplifier is because of this right here, which is a headphone output. So if you're in a dorm room or in an apartment and you don't want to disturb your neighbors, having a headphone out that works really well um, is very important, uh, which allows me to get really clear, clean tones into my headphones. And I'm able to practice beats and harmonica into my headphones without having any problems. So. Uh, that's pretty much my setup, and uh, I hope that this video was very helpful. And please do stay tuned for the next video, which will feature a song using all of these pedals so that you can kind of get a sense of what I do and how I actually use these pedals. So, thank you for watching.